Okay. Hello, welcome to the DebConf 13 in your city with Gunnar Wolf, Murray Allen, and Holger Levsen. Thank you. Okay. You know why, why, why you are here, and it doesn't really surprise me this is a very full session. <laughs> now, we have many uh, uh, possible bidders. We, uh, we're very happy because uh, when the, the, uh, the camp started, we didn't have any r real bids. This time, I think we have nine. So uh, we should all, be, uh, all try to hurry up and uh, get all of the bids uh, uh, below five minutes. So, uh, who... Five minutes is fine, not below five minutes. And if you do six minutes, please talk slowly and take your time. I know of um, three bits, actually. So it's not okay. that... Or oh, four, 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 there are four. We have slides for four bits, actually. Yeah. So, randomly, we started to... Uh, decided to start with Vienna. So, somebody from the Vienna team, please grab the microphone and... Uh, what is it? XPDF minus full screen. Do, 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 do. Which was Vienna? This one was Vienna. Yes, I would like to present the bit for Vienna. We already have a De Vienna logo for quite a while, which is the skyline for Vienna. Um, just a few pictures for which Vienna is known. Please go ahead. Um, the big wheel is one of the main Viennese attractions. Um, the St. Stephen, Stephen's Cathedral is also quite well known. Vienna is a big city, a uh, well-known tourist city. Um, these are the people that potentially are involved within the core local team. Um, you might know most, most of us. Um, we have been all more or less involved in different organizations of events. Um, please go ahead. Um, a rough estimate about the city, 1.7 million inhabitants. Accessibility is no issue at all. Um, all the public transports are accessible for handicapped peoples. Um, Vienna has the, uh, a big part of the United Nations, so English is very well known within this city. Um, yes, uh, the only problem might be for people which are smokers because in restaurants nowadays there is special designated areas for non-smokers and in public building uh, smoking is not permitted anymore. Um, it's uh, no problem to get to Vienna at all. The, the Vienna airport is really close. Uh, it's not one of the cheapest airports, I have to admit, but there are cheap airports all around with, with great connections through either trains or buses. So the connection thing is not an issue. Uh, about visa, uh, we are part of the Schengen and it's the same for almost any country in Europe, so no problem on these areas because it's also a big uh, city, there's no problem with being able to get any hardware stuff that is needed last minute or replacements or things like that. Um, we haven't uh, contacted any venue yet, but uh, when we think about DebConf in, in the usually summertime, July, August, Universities are mostly empty. Uh, student dorms are mostly empty. We can use these facilities to get a great uh, place to hook up. Um, these are some of the possible uh, places. Olga? Um, food is also not much of a problem. 
uh, there's a really great diverse variations are, are there, please. Um, yeah, about recreation, there's a lot around. Uh, Lower Austria is well known for hiking around. Vien Vienna itself is a very big tourist attraction, so in that area. Next slide, please. Um, Vienna is also known as the city of Johann Strauss and some other great musicians, so for recreation and other parts there is much to explore. Day trip uh, options include going hiking uh, to some place and maybe some other nice ideas that are hanging around. Yeah, like I mentioned, July, August is probably the best time in, in that respect. So I think that would be the last. I just want to add that I, I'm here because many people prodded me to be here. I have been thinking about doing it for at least seven years before even Helsinki came up, but I never managed to get people for the local team ready, but it looks like we have a great, great people around for joining the local team these days. Thank you, Rhonda. The next is Aigas, who will present the Lativa bit with Riga, with which video. Uh, that one. So, uh, I always forget. this is the video that was shown at uh, the New York Times Square. The 30 second video without sound about Latvia in general. So, lots of green, some architecture, some rivers. Fast boats. <laughs> <laughs> Very fast boats, yes. Uh, Well, it had to fit in 30 seconds, so. so that is Latvia. You saw on the map where it is on the very beginning. Now we're going with the, yes, right there. <laughs> Next video or? Now the, uh, the images. Uh, and now? Huh. Right. So. Uh, Riga is a multi satellite city that I want to have the DEPCONF in. So it has uh, 800, uh, more than 800 years old. It has lots of small uh, uh, streets in the middle and wonderful architecture that has been both very old and just restored stuff. Uh, and very old buildings that have completely been from the, 19, uh, from the 16th uh, there, but then there's lots of uh, modern touristy stuff as well. So the, uh, the center of the Riga is quite a tourist attraction in the nowadays. And then of course there's Soviet era buildings, starting from the simple blocks of apartments that people live in actually in the suburbs of the city. And uh, like the market, with a huge pavilions and lots of green around the city, lots of parks. Uh, the city is quite compact and uh, now we're looking from the center of the city and uh, there's a, a, a cross, uh, across the bridge we see one of the primary locations and here uh, we're looking back to the, to the main cityscape. We have uh, quite good infrastructure in Latvia. So just recently there was a report a, about average uh, measured internet speeds and Latvia came number seventh in the world, just beating out Switzerland. <laughs> I'll mention here that all the venues uh, proposed to have at least one gigabit uh, optical connection directly to the venue. Some have links to 10 gigabit optical connections. 
Right. So here's a map of the center of the city with the proposed venues that you can see on the wiki page uh, uh, mapped out. Number one is uh, where the dormitories and the Riga Technical University buildings that we could use for the venues. Uh, and number two, there is a hotel, a huge hotel that helps, uh, 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 can hold all of us and have a lot of uh, spare rooms as well and has all the conference facilities as well with the two prime uh, mentioned as the Latvian University building that also has uh, as an alternative alternative venue uh, location. So we have uh, actually three uh, housing uh, possibilities and four venue possibilities. Um, m many of the venues we will uh, almost assuredly will get free, but the housing uh, might cost us a bit. A uh, bit for the uh, student housing, a bit more for the uh, hotel housing. So this is the student housing. It is a uh, quite an old Soviet-style uh, building that usually during the year houses thousands of students. I'll go very fast to the venue, the primary does, venue. Does the student house have internet? Yes, gigabit optical internet <laughs> and Ethernet jacks, <laughs> multiple Ethernet jacks in every room. So here we see from the center of the city and across the river, across the bridge, that is where the actual uh, primary venue is. Now we see the secondary venue, the hotel in the background there, the big building. A close-up of it here. Uh, it actually held, for example, a Euro Python conference last year. And that is the, uh, the look that it has from that uh, uh, hotel upstairs. So, Yes, many conferences. Now we can show f uh, the funny side of the Latvian people with the last bit, and that is all for me. Sound is not important. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So for all people who are not aware of this, today we just present some bits. If you still want to do bits later, you're welcome to do so. The deadline for submitting a bit is the last day of this year, end of December. And then in January or February, I'm not fully aware of the timeline right now, we will decide. But today is just showing what options we have and what could be done. If you have better ideas, please bring them up. And the next is Switzerland, so what is that there? So we are Switzerland, by the way, in case. I don't think we should present anymore because anyway, I mistakenly sent the email to the ma the contest mailing list, so everyone knows everything about that. This is Switzerland. And, um, well, there's more, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice, you can camp around over there. There's, there's Ethernet, yeah, there's Ethernet. No, 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 it's GSM, but the signal is not so, f so strong. <laughs> so anyway, uh, by the way, that's on the left side is the logo of Debian CH. So why in Switzerland? Because it's a beautiful country. There's Alps, lakes, and landscapes. There's also people and cows, in case. It's, there are multicultural cities with a human touch. Most of the cities are, uh, in a sense, small, with three biggest, four biggest cities, like Basel, Zurich, Geneva, and the capital of Bern, which is in this, more or less in the center of the cities. There are quite a lot of international co entities, like one of the uh, offices of the UN, like the ITU, for example, IESO, for example, the CERN. There are four official languages spoken in Switzerland. And actually, we, are the second highest ratio, we have the second highest ratio of DDs per country, which means that probably most of the DDs should not pay to go there. OK? And then, well, <clears throat> it seems that we, are, we have quite bad connectivity, but still we have uh, big internet exchange points. We have a fiber connection which are available in most locations, especially in the biggest cities, and uh, the network coverage in the smallest one is quite good. And actually I would like to remind that uh, there we have quite a lot of ISPs that are Debian friendly, which is probably a good point. 
The infrastructure is a well-organized country, at least for tourism. We have a good and dense transportation network. Actually, you can uh, travel all over Switzerland more or less to two to three hours uh, by train. There are three international airports, Geneva, Zurich, and Basel. The Euro airport, we are a member of the Schengen area, and uh, quite a lot of established local communities. Well, the time and place, we, we haven't chosen any city yet. Or we haven't chosen any, actually, um, venue. No, what was the other one? Chalet. Okay, because if you can find a big chalet, it could be a good option. So if it is to be at university, probably it should be in uh, June, July, when there's uh, no more students. The, one of the problems is that um, the, the accommodation may, can be too, exp too expensive, and there are no really dormitory, big dormitory around in Switzerland. This is unfortunate, but this is the situation. At the same time, if you are in the cities, everything is nearby, and you have all kinds of, uh, of services, uh, facilities for, for everyone, okay? There, Switzerland now is a no-smoking country in a restaurant. You can still smoke outside if you want. And if you, if you go for the countryside, which is, could be quite, uh, quite a good option, you, well, we will be not really in that chalet, but maybe another one. And it should be in October or November, because it's, we should be out of the season in order to reduce the prices. Another option will be uh, April or May. And if it's in October or November, sometimes you can still ski, which is quite, uh, quite good. It's easier to organize, and you are in a natural environment, but it's difficult to find suitable venues in the sense that there are no, we should be in a hotel, so there's, there's no really big, big hotels. And they are quite expensive as well. Okay, well for the local team, Debian CH is an established local entity which exists and works quite well. There's a prospective core team of three to five people and at least until now, given that the bid was, uh, was decided, the bid, the proposal was decided three to four days ago, we have 10 active members that have been involved. Most of them are, the, are here or were here and uh, there are other on the mailing list that already helped. And uh, we, have, uh, we have found actually quite local volunteers from various community, like Lux or the university. And finally, well, if you have any questions, you can ask questions. Thank you. So the next is Montreal. Is somebody here to say something about Montreal? Okay, then. Reload the page. <laughs> Banya Luca again. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so in Istanbul, somebody. Well, uh, scroll down the page or something. So there's apparently an Istanbul web page by Sebastian Tanon. I make it bigger. Is yeah, Murray is <laughs> experiently driving it. To be confirmed. Okay, that was Istanbul. Next, um, next is Greece. Somebody from Greece here. Um, so there's a Greek look which is apparently claiming to organize this. Um, all members of the Greek look are willing to give their support. All 60 location is some hotel. I still make it bigger, but it's go to the wiki yourself. Um, Greece has some airports. <laughs> Science facilities. I'm not really prepared to propose this. Um, next is United Kingdom. Someone here? Neil? I, I do have a, a bit of a habit of being uh, volunteered for these sort of things. Um, <laughs> In, instead of some slides or, or a video, um, I, I thought I'd talk to you about uh, about where this idea came from. Um, we 
Uh, I think it was... <laughs> indeed, indeed, yes. At this DebConf, um, I, I presume we were sat in the, in the bar or something, and um, someone realised that on the Friday the 16th of August in 2012, it's Debian's 20th... 13th of August, it's Debian's birthday. It's 20th birthday. And Steve was regaling us with tales that uh, when he was at Churchill College, on one corridor he could find something like the, the X maintainer, the tool chain maintainer, and the kernel maintainer, all in one place. And we thought how great it would be to be able to return there and, and li live back a little bit of that history. And we thought, oh, well, no, we've done one recently. And uh, I thought they were absolutely crazy because I still remember DevComp 7 and how much work was involved with that. Everything from people turning up at the border without tickets or knowing where they were going to stay, apart from, I'm going to Edinburgh. But then we thought, no, no, that's fine. Because we know how much work is involved. And there is a lot of work. We've currently got about 22 people, I think, signed up. And we know half of them will drop out and not end up doing work. But that still ends up with a good 10 that, that are interested. And we thought, why, why Cambridge? Why, why Churchill? Um, well, apart from, apart from the history, it's, it's fairly ideal. You've got uh, all the lectures and all the hack labs and all the accommodation all on one site. It's one of the colleges which has a mini campus in the middle of Cambridge. And Cambridge itself is very well connected in terms of, um, in terms of say, airports. It's got uh, Heathrow. Uh, busiest uh, airport in Europe, uh, which is about two hours away or so on the train and tube. Uh, it's got uh, Gatwick, uh, which is fairly nearby, and we have Stansted, which is about half an hour on the train from, from the centre of Cambridge. Phil? Lots of people on the local team. Yes? <laughs> Should I make a bike It was bigger. Yeah. Oh, they're talking to him. Okay. That's fine. Um, was everybody asked to be on this list? Yes, yes, I will. <laughs> well, unless, you, unless you've seen your name and you're saying no, then yes. I've, I've been told that they've all agreed with this. <laughs> I've been told that they certainly all agree with it. Um, of course, and obviously you have the M structure in the UK. Multiple um, gig network connections with Janet, um, similar to we're having in Edinburgh, as long as Martin Kraft, if he's around, doesn't try and plug network cables into themselves again and everything goes up. Um, but then everything is incredibly accessible. We recently have the uh, Disability Discrimination Act and the Equalities Act, which puts a requirement on all organisations to make sure everything is accessible. <laughs> oh, I see. Phil didn't put that there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we took you for granted. <laughs> And, and then we have Cambridge itself is, is, is a major tourist um, destination for a lot of people. There's a lot of things nearby. There's punting on the River Cam, which is a traditional activity, which is nice and relaxing. No white water rafting, I'm afraid, but a little bit more relaxing than that. And nearby you have um, a, a couple of major museums. Uh, you have uh, Bletchley Park, which was a major code-breaking um, operation, and Alan Turing was, of course, um, employed there. Uh, you also have um, Duxford Air Museum, which has a wonderful collection of airports and everything to do with, with avionics that, that's just around the corner. So there's plenty of options for things to do. So we thought it would be, so, so in sort of summary, we decided it would be great to basically either go back to Cambridge, Churchill College, or if that doesn't work out, there's plenty of other places around that we can look. Um, we certainly don't underestimate the, the amount of work that's involved, but we do have a very experienced um, team. We've done this before. We know the pitfalls. We can make sure people actually get to the venue. And in fact, we send them to a small island off the coast of Scotland. And somehow everyone got back in time. I'm not entirely sure. I think we still hold the record for most number of tickets bought in a train station at Edinburgh Station. Um, but and also, it's, it's being in the UK, again, in England this time, it has uh, excellent connections. And I think that the local team, if you've met any of the UK people, might just be mad enough to actually give it another go. So, thank you very much for listening, everyone. This is not a bit yet, West Lafayette. Anybody wanting to explain it? Anyone know where it is? Oh. Uh, no 
Well, uh, this, this was the first bid that uh, appeared. It was uh, suggested by a, a Sorry? Yeah, yeah, uh, Schultz. Right, uh, right, Michael, Michael, yeah, sorry. Uh, well, the thing is, uh, he's not here to show it. I don't know if uh, he's uh, still pushing for uh, for it. Uh, I mean, because uh, he he hasn't been able to talk about it. It's an interesting suggestion to make the, uh, Bien, Debian ha uh, celebrate its 20th uh, birthday on the place it, it, it all started, uh, in the University of Purdue, in uh, West Virginia, I think. And uh, that's uh, basically it. Okay. And then we have Berlin or Germany, I don't even know it's if, who is going to do this. Uh, which one is it, Germany, Berlin? This is a microphone. Okay. Um, well, thanks for showing up. And I'm here to present you the bit for Germany. As you might remember, we already tried to get DebConf in 2011. Well, obviously this didn't work out as we hoped for. So I'm here again to show you this time the bit for Berlin. Next slide, please. I don't think I need to say a lot, of, a lot about Berlin. It's one of the greatest cities in the world, probably only beaten by Banja Luka and maybe New York. <laughs> Um, it has an international airport which is currently expanded and I've been told very thoroughly that it will be finished by 2013. <laughs> um, it's also in Germany, in the Schengen area, so everyone who has already a visa for the Schengen area shouldn't have any problems to attend. And it has very, very good accessibility. It has been a law in Germany for quite some time. In Berlin it's goes in a lot of details, including some kind of interactive maps, uh, web maps of Berlin, showing elevators which are currently broken, so yet you can um, evade them. And well, there's an in excellent infrastructure regarding public transport and networking. Um, next one, please. Um, we have a quite strong local team in Berlin, which organizes the Linux tag in Berlin, I'm sure you've heard of that before. Last year we had also a mini DebConf and lots of smaller events, including several bug squashing parties. Um, as venue, we are currently, we, are, we have three big universities in Berlin. One, the Humboldt University had made us a generous, a very generous um, offer for the last time we did a bit. We think we will have that a similar generous offer again for this bit. And well, I've been told some of you are going to the desktop summit next week or next weeks, um, which is held at the Humboldt University. You can, so you can take a look at the proposed um, venue yourself. Um, well, Germany is also famous for its um, political support of open source and free software, ranging from politicians, institutions, and important employees of institutions. Um, we've already been in contact with some of them, and they showed signs of support, but well, it's an early stage of the bid. Well, we have also some other FLOS communities active in Berlin, which are not yet necessarily involved in Debian, but are familiar with free software, with how community works. So it might be a good idea to reach out also to them and, well, expand the Debian community to them. And, well, it's not only Berlin. Entire Germany is filled with Debian developers. You probably can ask Bubul for the latest numbers um, of Debian TTs. <laughs> Um, and it's not only DDs, it's also a big community of users, contributors, and otherwise involved. 
Um, next slide, please. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, well, um, one thing I'd like to mention, which I forgot at the slide I was supposed to tell you, is that we've also already contacted some sponsors. Um, some of you might have already seen this. Um, so, um, uh, it, it isn't Schleichwerbung, nobody could read it. <laughs> so, um, we think we can handle it, and I'm looking really forward to see you in Berlin in 2013. So, there are 154 active DDs in Germany. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, thanks. So, um, are there any um, questions about those bits which don't turn out into a long discussion? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have months on the mailing list and on IRC, so... No, really, this session is uh, mostly about uh, well, an opportunity for the leaders to show their offers to the community uh, well, uh, as at a large as it can fit in this room. Uh, so, well, uh, if you have any general questions to any of them, uh, now is the right moment. Of course, again, this is not the final list. We do expect them to be as bold as Tiago and uh, withdraw with, uh, uh, when it's still time. Uh, but, of course, we, we expect at least one of them to go all the way through and make the foolish step of ho hosting the conference home. So, please, any questions? Okay, others? If there are no more questions, I have another proposal, which is not really for DEPCOM 13, but rather for 14. <laughs> Oh, what is it? Uh, Depcon. So Depcon 14 in Martinique. <laughs> um, yeah, it's located nicely between Venezuela and um, Cuba, um, but it's France, so it's the European Union. And <laughs> seriously, it's basically done. Um, there will be no shoes. <laughs> and there will be no stress. <laughs> it's all good, but there's no local team yet. We don't have a venue. <laughs> so it's work still needed to be done. And. <laughs> Pardon? Is there I think there are many bars on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and. So it's not yet done, but it's. <laughs> but I would, I would really like seriously to do it. But there's one DD living there, and we need to see how this works out. But it's fr France and French speaking, so maybe we'll see. We have to. Uh, we, we have to assure that the we have to assure that the living conditions are right for each of, uh, of our DDs. <laughs> and the other thing which I wanted to propose here, it's an idea state, is DEPCONF 18 on a boat. <laughs> um, it will probably be a rather smaller boat. <laughs> <laughs> because the previous boat holds three or four thousand people, and this I think is for four hundred people or something. Um, should be just without the ice. This is actually the tour the Pearl Cruise did in 2005, so there has been geeks on a ship already. Uh, of course, the, the biggest issue are the coast. I've been asked around, it's between 5,000 and 20,000 euros a day to rent such a ship. Um, but the really expensive part is the internet uplink. That's why I propose it for 2018 or 20, because I expect technology will advance and then it might be cheaper. Um, we 
could either Caribbean Sea would be an idea or Mediter Mediterranean Sea, where we could also do depth camp with, say, Barcelona for a week or five days and then start shipping around um, the sea and picking up people in different airports. <laughs> uh, but there are, of course, problems if we are all locked together for a week. Maybe we'll kill each other or other stuff will happen. Uh, Penny already said she would definitely not attend, so I'm really curious how many other people are saying, no, this is insane, or if you really should think about it and do it. Accessibility is, might also be an option, I don't know. The ships are usable accessible, but I hear that uh, on a 10-floor ship, only th one handy handicapped person was, only three were accessible, so we'll have to see what ship we'll find. Yes, obviously. Um, yeah. If you know about cruise ships or internet on ships, please talk to me with me. <laughs> I know Ingo Jürgensmann is working on that. Um, and I also propose this to make us think about new crazy options, how to do DEPCONF differently. It doesn't have to be a four-star hotel each week, each year. It can also be huts on the beach or something completely different. That's it. I just took the pictures from Wikipedia, the Pearl Cruise, and Andrew. <laughs> what did you say? Or? <laughs> BDA should launch the internet uplink. We, we all agree on that. Consider it done. <laughs> If you have the budget for that, we have many more creative ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Any volunteers for 14 or 18? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, then let's close this here. Thank you all to all the BITS teams. I look forward to what will happen in two years.